it's Mrs. McKelvey back with the next chapters of the story of Dr. Doolittle. Today we'll be reading chapters 8 and 9. Chapter 8 is called The Leader of the Lions. John Doolittle now became dreadfully, awfully busy. He found hundreds of thousands of monkeys sick. Gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, dog-faced baboons, marmosets, gray monkeys, red ones, all kinds, and many had died. The first thing he did was to separate the sick ones from the well ones. Then he got Chi-Chi and his cousin to build him a little house of grass. The next thing, he made all the monkeys who were still well come and be vaccinated. And for three days and three nights, the monkeys kept coming from the jungles and the valleys and the hills to the little house of grass, where the doctor sat all day and all night, vaccinating and vaccinating. Then he had another house made, a big one with a lot of beds in it, and he put all of the sick ones in this house. But so many were sick, there were not enough well ones to do the nursing. So he sent messages to the other animals, like the lions and the leopards and the antelopes, to come and help with the nursing. But the leader of the lions was a very proud creature, and when he came to the doctor's big house full of beds, he seemed angry and scornful. Do you dare ask me, sir, he said, glaring at the doctor. Do you dare ask me, the king of beasts, to wait on a lot of dirty monkeys? Why, I wouldn't even eat them between meals. Although the lion looked very terrible, the doctor tried hard not to seem afraid of him. I didn't ask you to eat them, he said quietly. And besides, they're not dirty. They've all had a bath this morning. Your coat looks as though it needs brushing badly. Now listen, and I'll tell you something. The day may come when the lions get sick. And if you don't help the other animals now, the lions may find themselves left all alone when they are in trouble. That often happens to proud people. The lions are never in trouble. They only make trouble, said the leader, turning up his nose. And he stalked away into the jungle, feeling he had been rather smart and clever. Then the leopards got proud too and said they wouldn't help. And then of course the antelopes, although they were too shy and timid to be rude to the doctor, like the lion, they pawed the ground and smiled foolishly and said they had never been nurses before. And now the poor doctor was worried frantic, wondering where he could get help enough to take care of all these thousands of monkeys in bed. But the leader of the lions, when he got back to his den, saw his wife, the queen lioness, come running out to meet him with her hair untidy. One of the cubs won't eat, she said. I don't know what to do with him. He hasn't taken a thing since last night. And she began to cry and shake with nervousness, for she was a good mother. So the leader went into his den and looked at his children. Two very cunning little cubs lying on the floor, and one of them did seem quite poorly. Then the lion told his wife quite proudly just what he had said to the doctor. And she got so angry, she nearly drove him out of the den. You never did have a grain of sense, she screamed. All the animals from here to the Indian Ocean are talking about this wonderful man and how he can cure any kind of sickness and how kind he is. The only man in the whole world who can talk the language of the animals. And now, now, when we have a sick baby on our hands, you go off and offend him. Oh, nobody but a fool is ever rude to a good doctor. You, and she started pulling her husband's hair. 
Go back to that man at once, she yelled, and tell him you're sorry and take all the other empty-headed lions with you and those stupid leopards and antelopes. Then do everything the doctor tells you. Work hard and perhaps he will be kind enough to come and see our cub later. Now be off. Hurry, I tell you. You're not fit to be a father. And she went into the den next door where another mother lion lived and told her all about it. So the leader of the lions went back to the doctor and said, <clears throat> I happen to be passing this way and I thought I'd look in. Got any help yet? No, said the doctor, I haven't. And I'm dreadfully worried. Helps pretty hard to get these days, said the lion. Animals don't seem to want to work anymore. You can't blame them, in a way. Well, seeing you're in difficulty, I don't mind doing what I can, just to oblige you, so long as I don't have to wash the creatures. And I have told all the other hunting animals to come and do their share. The leopards should be here any minute now. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, we've got a sick cub at home. I don't think there's much the matter with him myself, but the wife is anxious. If you are around that way this evening, you might take a look at him, will you? Then the doctor was very happy, for all the lions and the leopards and the antelopes and the giraffes and the zebras, all of the animals of the forests and the mountains and the plains came to help him in his work. There were so many of them that he had to send some away and only kept the most clever. And now, very soon, the monkeys began to get better. At the end of a week, the big house full of beds was half empty. At the end of the second week, the last monkey had got well. Then the doctor's work was done and he was so tired, he went to bed and slept for three days without even turning over. The ninth chapter is called The Monkey's Council. Chi Chi stood outside the doctor's door, keeping everybody away till he woke up. Then John Doolittle told the monkeys that he must now go back to Puddleby. They were very surprised at this for they had thought that he was going to stay with them forever. And that night, all the monkeys got together in the jungle to talk it over. And the chief chimpanzee rode up, rose up and said, Why is the good man going away? Is he not happy here with us? But none of them could answer him. Then the grand gorilla got up and said, I think we should all go to him and ask him to stay. Perhaps if we make him a new house and a bigger bed and promise him plenty of monkey servants to work for him and to make life pleasant for him, perhaps then he will not wish to go. Then Chi-Chi got up and all the others whispered, Shh, look, Chi-Chi, the great traveler, is about to speak. And Chi-Chi said to the other monkeys, My friends, I am afraid it is useless to ask the doctor to stay. He owes money in Puddleby, and he says he must go back and pay it. And the monkeys asked him, what is money? Then Chi-Chi told them that in the land of the white men, you could get nothing without money. You could do nothing without money. That it was almost impossible to live without money. And then some of them asked, but can you not even eat and drink without paying? But Chi-Chi shook his head, and then he told them that even he, when he was with the organ grinder, had been made to ask children for money. And the chief chimpanzee turned to the oldest orangutan and said, Cousin, surely these men be strange creatures. Who would wish to live in such a land? My gracious! Then Chi-Chi said, When we were coming to see you, we had no boat to cross the sea in and no money to buy food to eat on our journey. So a man lent us some biscuits and we said we would pay him when we came back. And we borrowed a boat from a sailor, but it was broken on the rocks when we reached the shores of Africa. 
Now, the doctor says, he must go back and get the sailor another boat because the man was poor and his ship was all he had. And the monkeys were all silent for a while, sitting quite still upon the ground and thinking hard. At last, the biggest baboon got up and said, I do not think we ought to let this good man leave our land till we have given him a fine present to take with him so that he may know we are grateful for all that he has done for us. And the little tiny red monkey, who was sitting up in a tree, shouted down, I think that too. And then they all cried out, making a great noise. Yes, yes, let's give him the finest present the, a white man ever had. Now they began to wonder and ask one another what would be the best thing to give him. And one said, 50 bags of coconuts. And another, a hundred bunches of bananas. At least you shall not have to buy fruit in the land where you pay to eat. But Chi Chi told them that all of these things would be too heavy to carry so far and would go bad before half was eaten. If you want to please him, he said, Give him an animal. You may be sure he will be kind to it. Give him some rare animal that they've not got in the menageries. And the monkeys asked him, what are menageries? Then Chi Chi explained to them that menageries were places in the land of the white men where animals were put in cages for people to come and look at. And the monkeys were very shocked and said to one another, these men are like thoughtless young ones, stupid and easily amused. Shh, it's a prison, he means. So then they asked Chi-Chi what, what rare animal it could be that they should give the doctor, one that the white men had never seen before. And the major of the Monroset said, Have they an iguana over there? But Chi-Chi said, Yes, there's one in the London Zoo. And another asked, have they an okapi? But Chi Chi said, yes, in Belgium, where my organ grinder took me five years ago. They had an okapi in a big city they call Antwerp. And another asked, have they a push me pull you? Then Chi Chi said, no, no white man has ever seen a push me pull you. Let's give him that. And that's where we're going to stop. So have you ever heard of a push me pull you? No, I haven't either. So I think it would be really interesting if you would think some more about that because we've got some more thinking to do. Why don't you in your booklet draw a picture of what you imagine a creature called a push me pull you might look like? Think about how many legs it might have, what kind of fur it might have, or does it have feathers or scales? Does it have a tail? Does it have big ears, small ears? What kind of eyes? What kind of teeth? What color might a push me pull you be? So use your imagination and draw a really interesting picture of a push me pull you. Well, that's it for this time. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.